So when I think of the definition of dentistry, the art and science, well, we are into cosmetic dentistry, the science, pathology, decay, perio disease, the art and science of the alveolar structures, get the, uh, get the perio guys and the oral surgeons into the definition here. So it's the art and science of these alveolar structures. Oh, there's one more thing. And how they come together. <laughs> because if you don't have those teeth occluding on your articulator, how can you tell what they're, you need to know. So it's the art and science of alveolar structures and how they come together. And that would have been an okay definition for some, but not for me. There's, there's one word that's really goofed up. If you're doing a, a full arch wax up on this, you better have that incisal guide pin. Because if, if it's a hot day and your air conditioner doesn't work and that pin's not there, it's a big mush job. How much force will those teeth accept as you drop that thing? Hardly any if your pin's long enough. You don't care. You're always protected against that. You never have to worry about breaking your wax up. You just set the pin. If you really wanted to know what forces your, your porcelain or whatever are going to receive, you should drop the mandible and then yourself, boom, bring it up. Otherwise, it's just the weight of gravity bringing the maxilla down. This articulator has been really messed up our concepts of how we look at occlusion and occluding. If you didn't have a guide pin and this was a really, really, really heavy upper portion, it gets squished. And that's about as much as we apply to clenching. The weight of the maxilla of an articulator is how hard people clench because that's how much force the porcelain has to endure on an articulator. That's it. Unless you're a moron and you go like this and you drop it, it goes, bonk, it goes, what do you do? Hey, you're going to break it. Hold the pin and slowly close it and then move it like this and, and let's go through the motions. If, an art, if a patient saw you do that, they said, what are you doing? Well, watch this. See how I hold the guide pin and, and, and we're going to close and I'm going to go like this. See how these canines are rising? The patient says, That's, who, who is that? Is that me? Here, give me the articulator. He'd hold the articulator and take the bottom and go, watch this. <laughs> There, that was me. That's not, that, articulators are fooling us. So it's not so much how they come together, it's when they come together. That's the definition of dentistry. Now what's so important about when they come together? How intense are they coming together? How often are they coming together? For how long are they together during that event and what relative position is that mandible in during that event? The art and science of alveolar structures and when they come together. And once you've got the when figured out, you can now modify the signs and symptoms from that activity by monkeying around with the occluding scheme. We have an ability to modify the intensity of the occluding when it's most pathologic, which is when they're asleep. Once you've nailed that parafunctional control, then you move up the model and you start to modify the occluding structures. Now you're going to aid in your therapy. We're going to learn about some code words all along this weekend. The TM Da Vinci Code. The number one term, if it's the only code word that you break, it'll be occlusion. Every time you hear that word, change it. The code word really is occluding. Does he have a class one occlusion? I mean, when he's occluding, are his jaws in a class one relationship? Oh, he's got a class two occlusion. No, 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 no. You mean when he's clenching, his jaws are in a class two relationship. Does it matter if he's not clenching or grinding? No, he's just got goofy looking teeth. How does he feel? He feels fine. So every time you hear the word occlusion, change it to occluding.